Now, it's been more than a century since treasures were looted by British soldiers from Ghana. Many of them hold huge cultural and spiritual significance. Now, in a landmark agreement, the Victoria and Albert and British Museums in London are returning them on loan to the Ashanti King. Our culture editor Katie Razzle has this exclusive report. There is anger. People look at it in colonial terms. Looting of items, precious items belonging to people, are things that they don't easily forget. Gold from the royal court of the Ashanti Kingdom, which was once one of Africa's most powerful states. These objects and many more were looted by British troops in the Ashanti capital, Kumasi, in 1874, during the Third Anglo-Ashanti War. Sold at auction then, now they're going back to Ghana for the first time in 150 years, to Kumasi's Mencha Palace Museum in a landmark loan deal with the Victoria and Albert and the British Museum. They enter the South Kensington Museum um, and they're put on display and they're displayed both as a work of incredible West African goldsmithery, but also as a sort of, you know, sign of British imperial and colonial power. 17 VNA items are returning, including a peace pipe used by Ashanti kings, the Asantahini, and heavy cast gold badges worn by courtiers tasked with cleansing the king's soul. The agreement is not with the Ghanaian government, but with Otumpfo Ose Tutu II, the current Asantahini, who once worked for Brent Council, monarch for a people whose history is steeped in gold and wealth. The deal's chief negotiator is Ivor Ajimandia. There's so much interest in these items. These were objects that were created by the royal artisans for all sorts of ceremonial reasons. Is yeah. the fact that you're taking them on loan a problem? It's not really a problem. At least these objects will be home. The British Museum is also loaning 15 gold items, including a sword of state looted by British troops during the Anglo-Ashanti War of 1895-6. British law bans some national institutions, including the British Museum and the VNA, from permanently returning objects. In giving a piece back, you're also giving back a missing piece of history. Nana Ofriata Ayim is a special advisor to Ghana's culture minister. She welcomes the loan deals with the Ashanti king. The Ghanaian government could not have agreed to the terms. The metaphor is, I, you know, someone comes into your home and steals something from your house keeps it in their house and then, you know, X amount of years later comes and says, I'm going to lend you your thing back. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And so in that way, I think it's going to be deeply problematic for a lot of people. But because I've been working, you know, with it, I know the kind of politics that surrounds it and also the kind of attachment to the idea of empire. Those objects with origins in war, in looting, uh, in military campaigns, we have a responsibility to the country's origins to think about how we can share those more fairly today. And it doesn't seem to me that all of our museums will fall down if we build up these kind of partnerships and exchanges. Have you felt ashamed that these items are here? I don't feel ashamed they're here. I feel they're part of a history of British Ghanaian interactions, some of which is around war, some of which is around slavery, some of which is an incredible creative Ghanaian diaspora in the UK today. The VNA insists this is not restitution by the back door. A loan is not a model the Nigerians would accept for the return of the Benin bronzes, nor the Greeks over the Parthenon sculptures. But with British law as it stands, for the Asantahini, this deal is the best way to bring the gold home for now. Katie Razzle, BBC News. Nana Ofariata Aim is a special advisor to Ghana's uh, Minister of Culture. You saw her in that report there. Well, I also spoke to her and asked her about the significance of the return of these artefacts. It's a first step, I'd say. Um, you know, the, the law um, here in the UK um, prohibits items from going back permanently. But as we know, the law has been changed before for the Holocaust items. Um, and so I think it's a step in the right direction. Obviously, a lot of people are not going to be happy with the idea of a loan going back to a country that really um, should have ownership of its own um, items. But it's a first step. This wasn't an agreement with the, with the country, was it, with the government? This is with the uh, Asante King. Just explain why and what's the significance of that. 
I think um, a proposal was made to the Ghanaian government, um, but it was a little bit problematic because the country can't really accept a loan back um, or can't be seen to accept a loan back. Whereas with the kingdom, I think it was a simpler process. It, the, the agreement came from, one agreement came from the VNA, went to the Attorney General's office and it was rejected um, because there were so many stipulations on how the items should be received back, for example. Whereas I think, um, you know, Ghana has enough sovereignty to know how to look after its own items. And these are Asante treasures, aren't they? Tell yes. us a bit more about them. So there's various items. There's um, a soul disc, for example, which um, the Asantehini would have worn um, as a protector of, the, of his soul. There's various headpieces. There's a gold pipe. And a lot of these items are imbued with spiritual significance. And so they're not just, you know, as Western museums might describe them, objects, but they're, they are sometimes even, you might call them subjects, um, because they are imbued with imminence, with spiritual significance. Is there a negotiation that could be reached here, a compromise, do you think, whereby the, the government would accept anything uh, other than the full return of these items? I mean, I know that in the language of, for example, the VNA, um, they were calling it a renewable cult cultural partnership. I think, like I said, I think this is a first step. And I think what would have to happen is some kind of um, agreement or the that goes from government to government. For now, it's the museums that have decided to return the items without the involvement of the UK government. So I think once the UK government gets involved, there's definitely a way forward. What do these items mean? How important is it that they are returned, even if not permanently? I mean, I, I think for me, the, the, the whole discourse is, 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 is almost much bigger than just about the return of the objects. You know, we all know um, the aftermath and the resonance of colonial trauma. And I think, you know, lots of things were taken, you know, relatives, people, items, but also the idea of our, our own cultural sovereignty, our cultural value. And so I think, you know, it's almost like a metaphor of, of this bigger fragmentation, this bigger separation of self, these items coming back. And so it's a, it's like I keep saying, a first step towards healing and reparation, I think on both sides.